Hello again, how are you guys? So today still we are in chapter 7, first section. Uh, chapter 7 is about the circular motion. So previously we said that in circular motion we have uh, acceleration uh, and we have two types of acceleration. Uh, we have acceleration because of changing in direction even if the uh, circular motion is in constant speed. So after the acceleration, today we have centripetal force. Guys, any circular path or any circular motion uh, needs centripetal force. Centripetal force, it's net force, which is directed toward the center. So important. All the time, the direction for the centripetal force must go to the center of the circle. So it's the definition for the centripetal force is the net force which is directed toward the center of the circle. For example, here we have a mass in a circular path in a circle. So we have velocity, we have radius, we have acceleration, but we need force, centripetal force, because this force will make the object all the time move in a circle. For example, if here we don't have a centripetal force, that means the object will keep moving in a straight line with a direction for the velocity here. So for example, again, if here we don't have a centripetal force, that means now the direction for the mass is going to be in a straight line to this direction. But because we have a centripetal force, so each second the uh, object will change its direction so the object will keep moving in a circular path. All the time, this, uh, the centripetal force must go to the center. Examples for the centripetal force, sometimes it's a friction force. Sometimes it's a gravitational force. It depends, and we will see later. Uh, for the formula for, from the Newton's second law, Newton's second law states that F equal to the mass times acceleration. Previously, we said that the centripetal acceleration equal to v squared divided by radius. So since the a equal to v squared over radius, that means the centripetal force equal to mass times v squared here over radius. So the centripetal force equal to the mass times v squared over r. Don't forget the unit for the velocity, it's meter per second. For radius, it's meter. That's mean here, it's meter per second squared for acceleration and it's Newton for uh, the centripetal force. So for example, now we can see a video about the centripetal force. If you've ever whirled a ball on a string, you know that you can keep the ball moving in a circle as long as you hold on to the string. You also know that if you let go of the string, the ball will fly away from you. But can you tell what direction the ball will travel in when you let go? Click the feature. So if we don't have a centripetal force again, the mass or the ball will go in a straight line. Take a closer look at the ball on the string. Even though the ball doesn't speed up or slow down, it's constantly changing direction. In other words, its velocity is changing. Since acceleration is any change in velocity, this means that the ball is always accelerating. And because it's accelerating, a force must be acting on it. What's the force acting on the ball? We can find the direction of the force by finding the change in the ball's velocity during a short interval of time, such as between points P and Q. To find the change in velocity between point P and point Q, subtract the initial, the initial velocity number. at point P from the final velocity at point Q. This is the same as adding the opposite of V initial to V final you'll find that the change in velocity is toward the center of the circle. Acceleration, which is change in velocity per unit of time, 
is also toward the center of the circle. And the force, which is acceleration multiplied by mass, is toward the center of the circle as well. To find the direction of the force acting on the ball near the bottom of the circle, look at the change in velocity between initial point R and final point S. When you subtract V initial from V final, you find that delta V points toward the center of the circle. Again, the force is in the same direction as delta V. Now look at the change in velocity between initial point T and final point U. When you subtract V initial from V final, you find that delta V again points toward the center of the circle, and so does the force. So what does all this tell you? While the force acting on the ball does change direction, the direction is always toward the center of the circle. A force that is directed toward the center of a circular path is called a centripetal force. This centripetal force is supplied by the string. When you let go of the string, the force stops acting and the ball flies away from you in a direction tangent to the circle. You've studied the... Now we can see some examples for the centripetal force. So as I told you, sometimes it's a friction force, sometimes gravitational force, it depends. So here... When a skateboarder goes around a curve at a skate park, the concrete wall provides an inward force that causes the skateboarder to turn. Or if we have a car on a curve... A car stays on the road as it goes around a curve because of the centripetal force created by the friction between the tires and the road. So here in the example for the car on a curve, the centripetal force created the, the centripetal force created by the friction force between the tires and the road. The moon orbits Earth because gravity exerts a centripetal force that pulls it toward the center of Earth. Here we have a gravitational force acts like a centripetal force. So any kind of force which go all the time to the center and make the object go and move in a circle, we will call it centripetal, uh, centripetal force. You move in a circle on a swing ride at an amusement park because the chains attaching your seat to the ride provide a centripetal force. So here, as we said, centripetal force all the time is a name given to any net force on an object uh, in uniform circular motion. Any type, any type of force can provide this net force. So it's sometimes, for example, friction force or sometimes gravitational force, it depends. So here again we have two examples if we have a centripetal force or if we don't have a centripetal force. When we have a centripetal force, that means the object will keep moving in a circular path. But if we like breaks here, uh, the centripetal force, that means it will go in a straight line and it will not follow circular path. So it was for today guys. See you next session inshallah. Good luck.